So you want to become a Salesforce developer. Why would you want to do something like that? I don't blame you. I'm a Salesforce developer. Choosing the career path of a Salesforce developer can be highly rewarding, but extremely frustrating. How many of you are jumping for joy debugging a thousand lined wall of text? I know I'm not. Joining the ranks of the coding wizards is not an easy mountain to climb. Learning programming is a huge undertaking with many different avenues you can go down and disciplines. There's almost an overwhelming amount of things you need to learn. And on top of that, you'll need experience to get a job. Well, if you didn't know, I'm Walters954 and I'm going to break down how you can become a Salesforce developer. Make sure to stick around to the end where you can hear my number one tip on how to become a Salesforce developer. So can you guess the first thing that I'm going to talk about here? Trailhead. Trailhead. Where else would you start on the Salesforce platform than Trailhead? If for some reason you haven't heard of it, Trailhead is a free online interactive Salesforce learning tool. Make an account, get on Trailhead, start earning badges start earning super badges. It's a really good way to dip your feet into the Salesforce ecosystem. If you're new to Trailhead, check out the card over here or over here where I do an overview on Trailhead. All right, now that you're on Trailhead, the next thing I want you to do is to learn another programming language. Now you may be scratching your head. You know that Salesforce uses Apex. Why would I want to learn something else? I'm trying to be a Salesforce developer. Well, Apex is an object oriented language and there are many other object-oriented languages out there. And all of them have the same basics, if statements, for loops, you name it. If you learn one language, you'll know another. Are you following me here? Apex is based off of and works similarly to the insanely popular enterprise development language, Java. Since Java is so widely accepted in the business world, there are tons of free resources that you can use and get to learn Java. But don't just limit yourself to just learning Java. There are really great languages like Python, JavaScript, where the learning curve may not be that big. Along those same lines, learning how to program and being a developer are actually two separate things. Data structure and development patterns to become a well-rounded developer. This could be a whole video on just learning how to program, which I'm very passionate about. But we're trying to become a Salesforce developer, so check the links down below if you want some additional resources and books that I like on programming. Oh, and one additional bonus of learning other languages, if Salesforce somehow doesn't work out or implodes in another year, you can become a Java developer. The next thing that'll help you become a developer is going for your platform developer certification. Through the studying process, you will start to pick up on different aspects of being a Salesforce developer. Understanding limits, what SLQL statements are, and how triggers work are all part of your job as a developer, and the certification goes over a lot of that. It's not enough to just pass the exam. You'll need to actually drill down and understand what the questions are asking for. Don't just memorize the answers from a Quizlet. Actually recreate the process inside of your own org so you can learn from it. Now I've got some rapid fire tips that will be a little bit more situational. If you have a local developer group, then join them. If you don't have one, maybe think about starting one. Everyone from the Salesforce Ohana is so great and always willing to share their knowledge. If you work at a place with Salesforce, but maybe you're not the developer or there's developers on the team, consider helping them out if you can. If a new project comes down the line and the business is asking for a trigger update, Try that out yourself in one of your sandboxes. Also, just reading and trying to understand existing code is part of becoming a developer. You'll need to be able to read code. So take a peek at some of the existing code and see if you can understand it. Ask for help and an explanation for whoever made it. I'm always a big one of this and it's trying to find a mentor. Like I said, reach out to somebody in the community. Heck, it could even be me and just ask them how they got there. Ask them for tips on how to become a developer. I'm always open for questions, so hit me up in the comment section. And now for what I believe is the number one thing you can do to become a Salesforce developer, and that is become an admin. Now hear me out. Just because it can be done in code doesn't mean it should. The mark of a great developer is understanding the tools at their disposal and when to use them. You have administration configuration tools and development code tools, and oftentimes they do mesh together in a beautiful harmony. Learning administration can be a bit easier than learning development. And this way you can get an admin job, continue to learn and grow, and eventually move into that developer position. Now I'm not saying any of this is going to be easy. It took me four years of school to learn programming, and I still didn't know anything when I got out. But what I always say is continue to learn 
continue to grow your skills and you will get there. Do not give up. Put the time and the effort in to learn development and it will pay off. Thank you all so much for watching. I am loving making these advice videos. I'm loving the support from all of you guys. Please make sure to hit that like button and comment down below on some things that you've done to become a Salesforce developer. Don't forget to check the description down below. I've got books in there that have helped me along my Salesforce journey. Also, let me know why you want to become a Salesforce developer. It's okay if it's just because of the money. As always, I'm Walters954, and remember, I believe in you.